Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about the top 10 things that you should buy for your classroom as a first year teacher. And I know that it's summertime, so that means lots of you first year teachers are either interviewing or you've gotten the job and now you're deciding what you should get um, as a first year teacher to put in your classroom. So I wanna help you with that. I know when I was a first year teacher, there was many YouTube videos that helped me with the basic material to start off your classroom. And I wanted to do it a little differently in this video. I didn't want to talk about the super obvious things, such as like a stapler, three hole punch, tape, a pencil sharpener. I didn't want to talk about the obvious things because I know there's other videos on YouTube that pretty much mention the same materials because they are very important. So I thought of some things that were so helpful to me this year and I used all the time, but are things that you might not think about as a first year teacher. And in this video, I don't want this to be talking about material that goes along with like behavior management or classroom management. For example, like um, having a prize jar or something because I use that all the time every day worked great for me, but I'm gonna do a separate video on like easy classroom management behavior tips. This is like materials that I used or my kids used every single day. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have 10 things and well, I have 11. 11 is kind of like a bonus thing that your school might already have. The first thing is a laminator, and I'm sure that's obvious, but trust me, a laminator is so important, and you might be thinking, oh yeah, my school has a laminator. Trust me, get your own laminator. On Amazon, you can get them for like $20. I have two. I had one at school, and I had one at my house, because you never know when you're home. There might be something that you need to print off and laminate, and you don't want to wait to go to school early the next day to get it done. So I highly recommend getting a laminator for your house, and one for school it is just for you so you don't have to wait or worry about someone else using it I'll try and add a picture or link it below the one that I have it's amazing haven't had any problems so yeah definitely get a laminator and laminating sheets next thing is to have a printer at home if you don't have a printer definitely get one it's worth the investment I got mine from Best Buy uh, I believe it was like $60. I've never had an issue with it. I also got the HP Ink subscription and basically it's like I think $4 a month and you can print 100 pages or something like that. So worth it. They send you ink um, depending on when you run out and highly recommend that because trust me there's going to be times at home when you're like, shoot, I need to print this, 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 and I don't wanna to go to school early the next morning to get it done. It is so worth it to invest in a printer. And if you can, do the HP Ink plan along with it and make sure your printer can be used with that plan. Okay, so the next thing, I think this is number three, is when you are a teacher, there is so many papers, paperwork, just random things you get throughout the year and you are going to need to come up with an organization system for this. I recommend just getting file folders and file the file hangers and just labeling those depending on what you get. So like, for example, maybe there will be a folder having to do with like English language learners, one for like behavior, one for whenever you interact with a parent, a file folder for each student if you're going to keep their work in there throughout the year or just records on your students because trust me there's such a high paper flow throughout the year so i highly recommend getting file folders or and the hanging file folders to keep them in uh, you can also get like the three drawer containers at walmart and some people do that to keep track of their papers throughout the week so like they'll have monday tuesday wednesday Thursday, Friday. So you can do something like that, but trust me, you need to come up with an organization system for the paper flow before it even starts or else it will get backed up and overwhelming so quickly and you'll just have this huge pile of papers and you won't want to go through them. <laughs> Number four, this is something that is so important to get in my opinion, and that is to get anchor charts. I know my school provided this for us because my principal was huge on having anchor charts in your room and I loved making anchor charts to go along with what was being taught. But definitely make sure you have anchor charts. These are so important as a visual for what you are teaching so the kids can 
reference it so they can see a visual of what you're talking about. And always go on Pinterest if you want ideas on what to put on an anchor chart. So many ideas. But yes, very important to have anchor charts in your room. I had anchor charts throughout the whole year in my room and I would just pull them down, put the new one up depending on what was being taught. Also going along with anchor charts is definitely get some of those scented markers. They're so fun. <laughs> the kids love them um, and they're just a really good marker to use for anchor charts because they're thick and they don't run out of ink easily from I mean I still have mine from the beginning of the year but they're the scented markers love them definitely get those to go along with your anchor chart number five and this is something that my kids and I used every single day and that is to have little whiteboards and obviously dry erase markers to go along with it kids love writing on whiteboards because it's just such a different feeling than writing with a pencil on paper it's something that they look forward to and something I did in my class is I did a lot of partner work. So I had them all on the carpet. Each student had a partner and they would be a one or a two. And for example, I would be like, I'd ask a question and I'd say ones tell twos, twos write it down so they'd be talking to each other. And my kids love this and that is basically how I taught every lesson was on the floor and they had whiteboards to answer questions and to just basically interact with me and with each other throughout the whole entire lesson. This is something they never got bored of. No one ever complained about whiteboard time. And even if it wasn't the most fun content, they were still engaged and talking to each other because they loved writing on these whiteboards. I think this is probably my top thing. I cannot imagine if I did not have whiteboards in my class. Definitely worth it to get a set of whiteboards. Number six is read aloud books. Like I said in my previous video, things I learned from my first year of teaching is kids love to be read to and there are so many books out there that kids love to listen to. They're so engaging. The pictures are really vivid and colorful and it just makes them want to look and listen and um, I would recommend definitely for the beginning of the year is getting some read aloud books that have to do with also teaching kids a lesson of some sort. I talked about this in my last video, the read aloud books I love to read my students. I'm going to do a video I think more in depth on the books that I think you should get to read to your students definitely at the beginning of the year and all throughout the year and why but definitely get some read aloud books just to have in your classroom for that first week of school. There's so many activities you can do along with it. And these are great books to reference to throughout the whole year. Number seven, get a whistle. I did not have a whistle the whole year and it was something I was always like, I wish I had a whistle. And I just, I don't know why I never got one, but I'm getting one this summer for next year. But this is just for recess for when you're trying to get your kids back in because there were times where I had to just scream for them to come back in. Of course, there's kids who are super far who don't listen. So just trust me, get a whistle. This can also be used when if you do transitions in the hallway. Um, in the first grade building, we did lots of transitions for like reading, math, uh, based on kids levels. And transitions can be crazy, especially in first grade. So when the kids were all switching, it would get crazy. The kids would be, you know, screaming, running, touching each other, and there would be a teacher who would just blow a whistle and they would just stop. Definitely get a whistle. Just gonna leave it at that. Number eight, get some Velcro dots. I use these so much in my classroom. I use this to put their name tags on their desks. I use this to hang things up in the room. Basically everything I hung up in the room was with Velcro dots. They're just super easy. You can get a pack on Amazon for so cheap of like a pack of a thousand, I think. I still have a bunch of them and I use them so much throughout the year. So trust me, invest in some Velcro dots. They're pretty easy to peel off when you're done with them, but they also stay on all year. There's just so many times throughout the year where something happens that you need a Velcro dot or you need to hang something and it's super easy. Also, I'm going to put this with Velcro dots is magnetic strips. There's going to be things that you want to hang up on the whiteboard. Get magnetic strips for that. Number nine is command hooks. Command hooks are great for hanging up so many things. There's going to be certain things that actually need a hook 
And for example, my classroom, I didn't have any storage or any space for backpacks. So I gave each kid a command hook and that's where they hung their backpacks. I also had those like pocket charts. And this is where kids would keep their, my school had an incentive where kids got their own money and they could trade it for prizes at the end of the month. And so I had one of those pocket charts and it had a, no, this is something that needed a hook. So that's what I used to hang that up. And that worked perfectly for storing money. And yeah, there's just so many things throughout the year that you're like, oh, I need a command hook for that. So trust me, get a bunch of command hooks before the year starts. Number 10. And this is something that was very important with um, just classroom management and making sure things run smoothly and kids aren't just getting up all the time is to have bins and caddies. I had each group, my students were in groups, and I had like that three drawer big storage cart from Walmart and that's where they put their books, their notebooks, stuff like that. And then on top of that, I would have a bin and this is where they handed in their work or they just put their work that they were still working on. And this really cut back on kids getting up and having to, um, for example, go to my desk if I had it there, just one for the whole class. This really kept things organized with each group. And you know, if they needed their writing paper the next day, all they had to do was go to their bit their bin at their desk and find their writing paper compared to everyone having one bin and the student having to go up and go through every single paper and every student having to do this to find their writing paper, for example. So it was just so helpful to have everything right there at their group. Also, I loved having caddies at each group. I know some teachers don't like this, but that personally worked great for me. I had a caddy at each desk and this was so I had their three drawer container with their books and I had the bin on top and then I had the caddy that was like in the bin. I put the caddy in the bin so it wasn't on their desk and they would always want to like keep touching it or like going through pencils or going through the erasers. I put that on top of the cart so their desk area was actually clear. Everything was on top of this container. In the caddy, I think it's really important. I just made sure the material in there was stuff they needed daily. So for example, I did not have glue sticks in there. I didn't have scissors in there. All that was in there was their pencils, erasers, and crayons. That was all that was in their caddies because that's stuff we used pretty much every single day. I highly recommend getting bins and caddies for each group of students. It just really cuts down, like I said, on the students getting up. It's so easy and fast for them to get what they need. They don't have to get out of their seat. And then, so the last one, which is number 11. So I just wanted to put this one in here because I know most schools do provide this now for the teachers. But if your classroom does not have this, I definitely suggest investing in one. And that is a document camera or some people call it an Elmo. If you have a projector or a smart board, this is basically so you can show, for example, students' work, your work, kids can follow along with you, you can project it on the screen, and you just put whatever you're trying to show under the document camera. And this is something I used every single day, and I can't imagine having to teach without this. So many uses for it, highly recommend getting that. Those were my 10 11 things that I think every first year teacher should have in their classroom. I hope that this helped you in some way. I'm sure you're interviewing right now or you just got a job. So congrats. If you're interviewing, I want to link some videos below for you that are just my tips on interviewing, how to answer the question, tell me about yourself. I will put those below. Um, if you're watching this and you have any ideas on what first year teacher should get that I did not mention, please put them below. I'm sure there's other things that are so important that I just didn't think of. So please put those below and I really hope that you found this video helpful. I hope that you're having an amazing summer. Teachers, if you're still teaching and you're so close to summer, just hold on, it's so close. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.